Hey guys, Tony here, and while the weather might look pretty crappy, today is a really special day for me, and the reason it's a special day is because I got the package that I've been waiting for, for mm, a little while now, and I've been hinting on my channel as to what it might be. Um, you guys all voted, um, the top two choices that you guys voted for, one was the Trinov and the other one was the Epson. So I'm going to take you inside now, even though it's raining here, so I probably shouldn't <laughs> leave my camera out in the wet, but I'm going to take you inside and um, we're going to have a look and see what it is. So let's go. <laughs> so, um, if you can't tell, this is a Trinov Altitude 16. It doesn't even fit on my unboxing table. So <laughs> well, the box doesn't. So I'm going to take it out so that we can um, look at it properly because even from this camera angle up here, you still can't see it. Man, I have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Can't believe I've got my very own turn off. Around so you guys can see it. So here we have the Altitude 16, very premium looking and feeling. <laughs> Very nice. Shouldn't be putting my greasy hands on it. But let's take a look, spin it around so you guys can see it and have a look. So we have a whole bunch of XLR ports, power, HDMI, fiber ports. There's a whole bunch of things on it. The front is beautiful. It's got, it's still got the plastic on it. Should I peel it off? I might peel it off later. Do a bit of ASMR peel for you guys. I'm going to redo my rack and I'm gonna rack mount this. So I've got to take the Denon out and obviously do something with the Denon. This is mine. I bought this, I paid for this with my own money. And before anyone wonders how I got it, I just saved up. It's been a bit of a journey and eventually I was able to afford it. So here it is. So I'll get on with the build guys. Um, redo the rack, put a couple of shelves in. Then I've got to label all of the XLR cables um, and the DB25 cables will be going in for the connection to the amplitude. However, I do have my Crix Electra amps, which is what these will be connected to directly. I'm gonna set all of that up and you guys get to watch some nice uh, juicy rack videos. So let's do it. So this is the back of the rack. Now that I've pulled out the den and you can see I've got the Trinov Altitude 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging in all of the XLR cables. So guys, the moment has arrived. Everything is now connected up. I hope everything is connected up correctly. I have my 12 volt triggers plugged in. I don't know if I need to program them in the tune off, but it is all done. So now it's time to press the button. A few moments later. So guys, guess who turned up at the studio today? This is Michael from Crix, who you may have heard me reference on many occasions on the videos over the last couple of years. Michael was instrumental in helping me get the setup to where it is today, including the initial setup of the MX-10. Yep. So thanks for coming, Michael. No worries, it's been really good spending a couple of days and yeah, meeting the family and checking out the home theater and the studio. Yeah, awesome. Very impressive. Awesome, yeah, thanks again. So Michael, in your experience, how many MX-10 Trinoff combos have you seen? So yeah, this is the first MX-10 that I've calibrated with an Altitude 16. I've done an MX-5, MX-20, 30 and 40, but being able to do this yeah, MX-10, it was nice to be able to see how much performance we could eke out of, um, out of the MX-10. So a lot of people might think that you need an MX-20 or 30 or 40 to really sort of get the most out of a Trinoff, but I think we've seen here that putting it on MX-10, um, it can get some pretty incredible results. The MX-10 is certainly no lightweight in terms of performance and output. So yes. it's been really nice being able to 
hook that up and have a bit of a listen to that and get the most performance we can out of that system in your room. Yeah, absolutely. I'll say that I'm definitely not disappointed with the end result. So it's been a journey going through MX10 with obviously from two years ago, I was talking about a tune-off one day and it was you know, always going to be something that I wanted to do. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it right now. It just circumstances aligned that way that I was able to afford to do it. But the Electras, going with the Electras, the three five channels, and then pairing that with the Trinov and the MX-10s, the Atmosphere XA20 overheads and the Symmetrics in walls. It's just the perfect combination for my sized room, I think being quite small, 3.6 meters wide by 4.6 meters deep. It's a three meter high ceiling, which means it's kind of like a box and it's had its own challenges. And, and into getting a really good base response, but it's amazing what the Trinov has been able to achieve yeah. um, with this combination. I think that the choice of speakers in your room is just perfect. Like the MX-10 in that size room with the symmetrics in the wall and the atmospherics uh, hidden away is just like the perfect combination for, for mm. the room, yeah. Definitely, um, couldn't be happier. So I ended up ordering the Altitude 16 but often what happens is they don't necessarily come with a microphone. So you need to order that separately. And being a DIY enthusiast that I am, I knew that I wasn't gonna be happy with just getting a calibration done remotely or just at a one-off uh, situation and then being happy with leaving it there. I wanted to learn and I wanted to understand how the Trinov works. So I did end up ordering the microphone as well, which is an additional cost as well as the cables because my server rack is in another location. So I needed to get this special cable, the extension cable for the microphone so that we could reach the 20 odd meters as going by the path down the hallway. So yeah, uh, Michael's got the microphone in his hand right now and awesome. <laughs> so it was nice being able to, yeah, just rock up, not have to bring my full kit with the microphone and cable and all that sort mm. of thing. It was nice just having that here ready to go. So it made my packing a little bit easier. And it's a very cool microphone. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the microphone? Yeah, sure. So there's four nodes on it, or four individual microphones uh, on that. So they're all calibrated individually. You get a calibration file. So what this does, because it's got those four nodes on it, it's able to essentially triangulate where the speaker is coming from. So this is a proprietary Trinoff microphone. And yeah, it's able to calculate exactly where speakers are in 3D space down to uh, one centimeter and one degree. So it can really accurately get a representation of where the speakers are in your room. And that can be used for the 3D remapping feature. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's one of a kind mic, really. They're, they're very impressive. So after I'd set everything up, obviously we decided to start again from scratch. So maybe you go through a couple of things that we did um, during your time here. Yeah, so more from the basic level, we just went in and set up speaker assignments, made sure that each speaker was set up to the correct output. We then went through to the base management and set up some crossovers, uh, low pass and high pass filter, and then moved through to running the calibration, making sure the microphone was nice and lined up exactly where it needed to be. We then moved the microphone between the seating locations so we could get measurements on what the response was like at the different seats. And then once that was all done, we computed the measurements and then moved in towards the target curve uh, where we could set up a bit of a sound profile that I think you you liked. Like it's it's a, setting up the target curve is a mix of just getting a sound of that's, that's accurate, but also has a bit of your flavor to it. So no target curve has to be exactly the same as the mm. other. It's quite a personal thing. We ended up creating about three of those mm. and switch between them. That's a nice thing. We set up presets where one was a bit, uh, had a bit more top end to it and one that um, was a bit smoother, a bit smoother roll off. And we could have a bit of a listen to a lot of the scenes and decide which one we liked and tweak it from there. So we just went through the speaker layout as you can see here on the screen and set up, made sure that all the outputs were assigned correctly to the speakers and you can run pink noise on it. It's a quick, easy way to assign the speaker channels to the correct output to make sure they're all okay. Yes, because on one of them, I got it round the wrong way when I was plugging it in initially. So yeah. we had to flip um, nine and 12 around the other way. So yeah. because I, that was my mistake when I was plugging it in. So it is really cool that you can just assign every input to a specific speaker. So when you sit down, you can, visually or audibly hear the, where the speaker's coming from yeah. and be able to, to assign it. It's nice from an installation point of view because sometimes if you're trying to run a whole bunch of speaker wire back to a particular location, like most people would try and assign, you know, label it and assign it. But if there's 
um, a situation where it's a bit trickier too, it's really easy just to reassign a channel. Mm. It's, you don't have to trace it all the way back. You can just go, oh, yeah, that's this particular location and reassign yeah. it to a different output. So this is the target curve that we kind of decided on based upon my personal taste, because obviously we're calibrating it for my room and there were certain things that on maybe where there may have been more of a, a slope down towards the end. I actually liked it more personally with a little bit of a gradient going up uh, because I'm not sort of into music or listening to music. It's purely for movies. So this is what we came up with. And it's really cool that we're able to go in and pick points on the curve and just be able to move it mm. and then have the tune of try to honor that as well. Yeah. Which is really cool. And it all the target curve isn't used alone just on its own. You need to think about it with your base management and your crossover settings. And if you have an excursion curve and it's not just, um, you can treat it as it is on its own, but you can also um, think about it in the context of the measurements and all the other base management as well. So then the magic button on the tune knob is the optimize button. Yep. Um, and it's amazing how when you turn that off, what it sounds like compared to when you turn it on. So maybe we can talk a little bit about the optimizer. So in terms of the optimizer, it can optimize the frequency, time, impulse, phase. There's a lot of stuff under the hood that it does that it's because it's a CPU based processor, it's got the grunt there to be able to perform those algorithms and mm. do what it needs to, to, um, to create that sound that you really want. So moving to one of the coolest features that I think, and one of the reasons people may think it's a silly reason to just want to have something, but it's one of the main reasons that I wanted to have the Trinov in terms of just the pure performance that it gives is using the 3D object viewer. So you can actually use the Trinov built-in Atmos viewer to see where objects are placed around the room. And it was great to be able to see that because we were talking while we we're doing demos, we demoed so many things over the course of your visit. And one of the things was we were trying to work out, well, is this track, does this have the positions baked in or are there actually things moving around? Because it's like, hang on, I can't really hear there anything going overhead. So it was great to be able to open up the object viewer and just to be able to see where things are moving around. So yeah, like in Spider-Man, you, you suggested that we looked at that because there was going to be a way for us to solo out some of the, the channels so that we could actually isolate the overhead speakers mm. to see what sound was actually coming out of them. And I was amazed that there were actual vocal tracks coming out of those overhead speakers. And, and that translates in a complete track, it translates to that positional sound and really feeling like the voices were coming from you know all over the place so yeah that was pretty amazing so it's a nice feature to have especially if you want to demo scenes and have a good look at actually what is going on overhead you can just solo them out and just listen to purely what's happening overhead without mm. having to go and unplug speakers yeah so maybe you can just sum up the object viewer for us and tell us some of the other advantages yeah it's just it's more like a sort of nerdy kind of way of looking at the sound which hasn't really been able to be to been done before so just being able to listen to a track and bring up the object viewer and just see where the objects are moving around the room it's really cool when there's a big panning scene where it sound moves the whole way around the room yeah. or overhead and being able to go into the object viewer and actually visually see where those objects are and what they're doing and you can even see their scale so you can see how many speakers they're engaging depending on their size and scale. So it's a very cool feature. So after we got everything working and we sort of, we were using the demos a lot. So the main demos that we were using were A Star Is Born, which I think a lot of people like to demo, as well as um, Godzilla, uh, the Batman, uh, where he starts up the Batmobile. And I guess for me personally, my room, I know my room quite well and I think that's why I can sort of speak to how my room sounded prior when I had the Denon 8500 in there. And it sounded great even I had separate amps prior to the Trinov. And having the Denon did sound really, really good. But then the extra depth that you get from the Trinov, I was hearing things that I had not heard before, especially in the Batman scene. When he's revving the Batmobile, you just hear these little flicks of the engine. Just little sounds, yeah. yeah, little splutters that I can swear because I've demoed that scene so many times, just things that I've never heard before. Um, and it was just amazing to to see that that could actually be extracted out of that track. And having the timing and the optimizations to bring that all to one um, spot in the room and weight what sort of optimization you want to put on what seats is one of the things that really makes it stand out. Yeah, absolutely. And 
I, I'd never really demoed music before because I'm not really into music as such in a home theater situation. But listening to the Star, Our Star Is Born and those two tracks that where she's singing, that was almost the benchmark test that we were using mm. with the optimizer just to see how things sounded. And it was just incredible. I've seen that, I've demoed that before. And then to hear it once we had all the target curves and everything set up and just everything just came together really well. And you could just hear the bass from the bass guitar. It sounded like you were in a, like in the actual amphitheater and you could feel, you get the little bass hitting you a little bit, but not overly like it's an explosion, but it's, it's coherent with what was going on. They're standing on stage with the bass guitar and just the, the, the vocals, it was not strained. It was just really consistent with what you were seeing on the screen. Yep. Yeah. It sort of puts you into the concert without trying to sound too cheesy. It puts yeah. you in the middle of the action. And it does. We tried John, we played John Wick a lot. And <laughs> it's, it's a lot of, it's a good fun scene that, you know, John Wick one scene where they're going through the club and just the, yeah, just the impact, like really tweaking in that curve to give the, you know, that those really yeah. nice cracks to the, to the bullet shots. Oh yeah. And just, <laughs> And, and the, the sizzle and the sort of spark to when the glass shatters, um, yeah, all the way through to the base of the, the music in the background in the club thumping away. Yep. Um, just adds, yeah, a, a lot of that impact. So. It does. The soundstage was really big. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the sound in the room is is a made up of so many different components. Yeah, there's, there's the speakers, but there's interactions with the room and how it's calibrated and optimized. There's, there's so much to it. and. Yeah, when it puts that big smile on your face while you're watching those scenes, you know you're pretty close. Oh yeah, there were, there were a couple of moments, I won't lie, but lucky it was loud enough that Michael didn't hear it. At least I hope he didn't hear it. Um, <laughs> oh damn. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so summing up the experience, um, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Michael for coming up. Um, not just to help me calibrate, but just on a personal level. It's been great to have you over. Um, I know my family's enjoyed having you over as well. And, and just being able to share our love of this hobby because in my personal life, I don't meet a lot of people that are into this hobby. So it's just been good to, to sit down with someone that's as knowledgeable as you are in, this, in, these, um, in these areas and being able to get the system sounding where it is. I, I still can't believe that I own a Trinov. Um, I still can't believe it. Like it just doesn't feel like it. It's real, but I'm very, very excited and very happy to have it in in the setup. And it will be many more videos to come. Yep, uh, that's good. No, thank you for having me. We've had a really good time. You know, going out to dinner and yep. yeah, just enjoying ourselves. If the trend off wasn't here, I'd I'd still be here. Hundred percent. Catching up and talking. Oh, we planned it. And... We planned it even before mm. we knew I was going to have a trend off. So yeah. yeah, I look forward to coming down to Adelaide and maybe hanging out with you for a bit and yeah. checking out the factory and don't push it. Okay. No, no. All right. Well, <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Don't put that in. I'll put that in. That's staying in the video. <laughs> you know, not letting me in my house now. <laughs> I've got a geolocator on your phone. So. You do. I shared my location with you when you were coming. I know. Yeah, it's a bit weird. But I only put one hour on there. Yeah. So yeah. it's gone now. Yeah, you can check. It's you about way. 58 minutes. <laughs> Anyway, go back to what was the video. Anyway, this is the banter that we've been having over the last couple of days. So we've had a heap of fun um, in doing this. So yeah, again, thanks, Michael. I'm sure I'll be in touch with any little questions I have over the um, the next coming weeks. Yeah. Um, but I'll be looking, I'll be doing a lot of the tutorials. There's, there's a ton of video content made by Trinov as well, which help you get started. So if anyone's interested in, you know, going down this path of owning a Trinov, you, you will be supported. There is a lot of information out there. And there's a lot of um, support from the guys. Even while we're here, um, Michael was able to dial into Tom Garrett, who you may have seen on the previous video, which I'll leave in the link above. Um, he's He was over in Scotland and he was um, able to just remote in and be able to um, have a look at a few things and offer some suggestions. So the support from Trinov is excellent as well, as well as Chris. Yeah, so being able to remotely dial in and connect to your system over the coming years or months or whatnot, we, I can dial in and have a look at it and we yeah. can tweak it and yeah, you can give me your feedback. So it's one, yeah. of the, one of the nice things. That's excellent. So anyway, guys, a big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, make sure you smash the like button for me and consider subscribing to see my future videos. But anyway, guys, that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye, Bye for now. For now. That's good. good. I liked it. Yeah. I was a little bit early, wasn't I? Doesn't oh, matter. I need to do it again. None